Welcome back. I'm speaking with Boris Karaj. He's a lecturer in international development studies at Trent University in Canada. He's also the editor of the book Accumulations, Crises and Struggles, Capital and Labor in Contemporary Capitalism. Boris, welcome back. Hello, Sharmini. I know these are very sad circumstances for you, Barish. Um, and uh, in Turkey, uh, we are also facing an election, uh, and uh, the tensions are high. Uh, hence why uh, some people are alleging that the government and the government of Erdogan is responsible for the attack. Uh, let's talk about the upcoming elections. Uh, what are the, who are the players, and what's at stake here? So there are four uh, main contenders. Uh, of course, uh, the, the uh, first one is the AKP, the uh, well, party that has governed Turkey for uh, about 13 years. And then there's the uh, People's Republican Party, uh, the uh, Social Democratic Party. And there's the MHP, uh, an ultra-nationalist slash uh, fascist party, according to many people. And then the HDP, uh, a pro-Kurdish party, but which is, but uh, it is actually a coalition of a number of uh, uh, pro pro progressive uh, uh, groups in in Turkey. Uh, so these are the main contenders. Uh, the elections, the election will take place on November the first. Uh, the major issue for the AKP is that the HDP, the pro-Kurdish party, stays under the 10 percent electoral threshold so that the AKP can uh, capture the majority of the uh, members of the parliament. So, uh, and the HD HDP uh, received 13% of the vote uh, back in uh, June. So it will try to hold on to its uh, electoral base and the, uh, the percentage of its uh, votes. But uh, I, what, one of the, I think, uh, questions is that are the, are, is this election going to take place uh, on November uh, 1st? There has been such a significant escalation of violence, in the, uh, particularly since July. Uh, and uh, we are actually, we don't know if it's going to take place or if, we don't know if it's going to be a fair election. And is it in the interest of Erdogan to actually postpone the elections? Well, <sighs> He, he can, uh, according to the Turkish constitution, uh, according to an article in the Turkish constitution, which was uh, put in there uh, right, uh, during the, uh, right after the military took over power in 1980, he has the power uh, to postpone elections uh, if he claims that the Turkey is in a state of war. Uh, and it could be in his interest. Uh, I think the escalation of violence could serve him. But at the same time, uh, he's playing a very, very uh, dangerous game. He has polarized the country so much. We have never seen a, a, such polarization. Maybe it can be compared to the 1970s when right wing and left wing uh, militias were clashing in the streets. But uh, I think today it's even worse. And that escalation of violence and polarization might lead to uh, really, really uh, a very dangerous episode in Turkish history. It might even lead to uh, a civil war, which uh, the progressive forces and, uh, above all, the uh, pro-Kurdish party, HDP, has been trying to avoid. Barish, apparently there's been an escalation of... Uh... Uh, conversation and rallies uh, throughout Turkey asking people to under these kind of stressful uh, uh, conditions and attacks that Turkish people are facing to actually uh, unite uh, around Erdogan in what form is this manifesting well it, it is something very interesting to place the day before the explosions a convicted mafia boss uh, Sedat Peker held a rally in uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan's uh, hometown. And he asked the people to unite uh, around Erdogan. Otherwise, there would be so much blood. 
Uh, so the escalation of violence and the branding of uh, the pro-Kurdish party and its members as terrorists might really rally support for, for Erdogan, but it could also uh, it could also backfire because uh, many people have started to see what Erdogan has been up to and what he's been trying to do, and uh, people are the voicing their opposition and it, it, at this moment it is really I we can only speculate we cannot predict what what is going to happen but if this continues this discourse and the the, the actions uh, by the government continue uh, I don't think that anyone will benefit from that process now, one would and could argue that uh, Demir Tas, the leader of the HDP, um, I, you know, now in a more fierce uh, position to defend the party, and uh, elections at this time could also benefit them. What do you make of that? Yeah, it, it, they could, but uh, because of the, uh, the, the, the actually the fighting that took place between the Turkish state and the Kurdish guerrillas in the past couple of months, many Turks again started to blame the Kurds for the escalation of violence. And you, one thing is very important, the, the, a significant part of the media is in the hands of the government, but above all uh, in the hands of uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan. So they, sh they, they have the ability, the power, the capacity to shape public opinion. And many people have again started to blame the Kurds. So uh, I don't know how they're, they're going to uh, respond to uh, what, what the, uh, the process we've been going through and how they're going to vote. But that is the plan, that is uh, Erdogan's plan, to mobilize the nationalist vote against the HDP. Barish Karaj, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.